Dave Clark, red, three. I think this is from 95. Yeah, 95. And this was one of the first records I ever bought. I remember getting it and probably read about it in like Music Mag or something. Um, and as a sort of 15 year old was like, yeah, okay, okay, this is supposed to be amazing. So I went and bought it without listening to it and got it home. And, and it was amazing because all the, the Red series, each of them are, you know, completely seminal. Actually, it's, it's number two, which is seen as, I think, the, the all-time, all-time classic. And actually, yeah, that's probably, probably is. But, the, but all three of them are great. I didn't know them at all and found myself a couple of years ago in a sort of Twitter altercation with him. It sort of culminated in him calling me a dipstick, which I was like, <laughs> I really, I thought this was like, this is like a massively cool turn of events being called dipstick by Dave Clark on Twitter. I played before him at Awakenings in Eindhoven and um, was completely blown off the decks by him in a really unambiguous way. And like <laughs> the whole crowd thought he was much better than I was, which normally I would be, you know, pretty pissed off about, but it's Dave Clark. So I was kind of like, yeah, okay, it's Dave Clark. This is uh, a Jazz on Over 12. I was playing at, around that time, predominantly sort of garage stuff, but was, was trying to sort of spice up my garage DJ set with house and sort of breaks and really sort of stumbled across the sort of German broken beat thing completely by accident. The sounds they were getting on the drums, especially I remember, was, was really quite cool. Um, it was completely different to the um, the garage stuff that I was playing, the broken beat stuff was a lot slower, so I had to like, pitch it up massively to, to mix it in. So I definitely would have played this on plus eight, I reckon, which probably sounds completely ridiculous and would have been like, yeah, it's probably massively offensive to, to those to the guys who, who made it. But <laughs> yeah, just another good shit. This is Shackleton from 2006 or 2007 on Skull Disco. Skull Disco was connected to the early dubstep stuff and it was, you know, just two steps to the left for sure of, 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 of that, you know, that sound. Blood on My Hands was always probably my favourite, I think, of the Skull Disco releases. It's a typical Shackleton, kind of really, really sort of deep and sort of, I mean, deep's an obvious, an unbelievably obvious word to use, but it really, it really is. Um, and, and just just really kind of emotive at the same time. Great, really good stuff. This is an undeniably classic garage record. It's by Sunship, remixes of Friendly Pressure. And there are two of them, and I can't remember which one is the one, but I'm pretty sure there's a 4-4 four, four one and a two-step one, which tended to be how things worked in those days. From 1998, which arguably was the heyday or the, the high point of UK Garage. I remember hearing it on a, must have, on a Tough Jam CD or something. And, you know, just you know, play that again, please. The Smiths, uh, as they were for a lot of people, as they are for a lot of people, were quite seminal for me when I was growing up. Every, everything, every little part of the Smiths is really special and really, um, you know, integral to why they were such an amazing band. It was the combination, I think, of Morrissey um, being extremely serious, but also extremely not serious at all, which really gave them the sort of edge and and the ability to have a sense of humor in the context of serious music is one of the rarest things i'm pretty sure this is my favorite smith smith's album this is like one of the best things ever frankly would you please let me see her do you really think she'll pull through well thank you for talking with us today no worries thank you thanks for having me